and the award for coolest sounding pellet pistol goes to the Umarex Beretta PX4 Storm. <laughs> it's definitely got one of the best names of a pistol uh, in my opinion. So yeah, this is the Beretta PX4 Storm by Umarex. This is a CO2 powered 0.177 pellet shooting air pistol replica of the Beretta PX4 Storm. I really like this pistol. It was a kind of a toss up between this and a couple of others. The um, I like the look of the Gamo. Is it PT85 or P85 or PT85? Yeah, and there's a PT25 as well. I think it is by Gamo. Both of them looked fairly realistic, but they're not really replicas of anything, which sort of swayed me away from those. Then there was the Sig Sauer P226, and I liked the look of that, but I liked the fact that this, uh, on the other side I'll show you in a second, has a cut-out ejection port. Um, I just really like the shape and styling of this gun, so I got this instead. And then I got the Sig as well. So <laughs> it was more of a postponement rather than a choice between them. So let's have a look at this then. This is a lovely pistol. It's metal slide here, a polymer on the lower. It's a really unique styling to this pistol. Uh, let's talk about what works and what doesn't work on this side. So the slide safety, uh, typical of Beretta, having the safety in the slide there. That doesn't work. It's just molded into the metal there. Slide catch release is a separate piece, but doesn't do anything. Um, got a full working metal uh, hammer and trigger. This pistol is not loaded with pellets or CO2, just so you know. Some nice markings here, Beretta PX4 Storm. And you've got your calibre markings here and a picture of a pellet there, just to remind you. You've got some... Uh, serrations here in the barrel in the barrel in the uh, in the slide which help you like the slide or sometimes people want to do a if you've got the real firearm you might just want to check if you have one in the chamber and people might use that front one just to do a quick check there uh, or maybe some people wrap the guns from the front uh, it's not for me but you've got the option so there you go. I guess it's there on the real one, so it's got to be there on the replica. Uh, let's have a look at this alien-looking grip, then. So if you've got your uh, magazine release there, and then you've got more markings. PX4 Storm. Uh, you've got this kind of aggressive etching, almost like a cutaway in the front of the grip there. That feels really good. Um, Nice that it kind of allows you to kind of squeeze into the grip rather than sitting on top of it. So that's quite nice. I, I really like the um, the weight and the kind of the ergonomics of this gun. It feels really good. It's it's not overly heavy, although you can tell it's a metal slide. You can tell there's a lot of metal going on inside, but it's not overly heavy. It's not quite nice to hold, quite comfortable to hold, and yeah, it fits my my hands, which I would say are small to medium size. Uh, really quite nicely. Uh, round to the back of the grip then. Uh, you've got this sort of etching here again, a bit more grip. You've got your Beretta arrows there. And this piece, these not just here, and I need to have a look at another photo of the actual PX4 Storm by Beretta. Because I don't know if they exist on the real one, or if they are just for this, so that you can pull that off easily because this is where your co2 goes uh, let's talk about that in a little bit but i'm just not sure if they exist on the real one or not i'll have to look on online um anyway bottom you've got some stuff going on there which we'll talk about shortly on the top you've got this screw here which makes me believe that the Rear sight is possibly adjustable, certainly for windage, if not elevation. I don't see any elevation screws or anything like that. 
uh, bit of front sight there. Arrow, but not a great deal. But you can see inside this is some rifling there because it is a pellet pistol, so it will be spinning them as they come out, and they'll be a little bit more accurate than a BB gun at that point. A guide rod there, which is just, it's not actually a guide rod, it's just a little circle there to show you that's where the guide rod would be. On to the other side then. You've got, as I said before, you've got this cut-out ejection port. Although you can't see, I mean, you can see the top of the magazine there, but it's not completely like the real deal, but I still like that function. I like that for the fact that this is a bit cut out. It uh, makes it a bit more authentic. Again, this ambidextrous safety still doesn't do anything on that side. Um, you've got Umarex there. Some safety information, not a toy. All of that malarkey. But again, that's a subtle, as you can see if I put it down there, it's all in black. So, it's not intrusive. Similar markings on the grip, as you can see. And then this. This is the... Uh, almost like a trademark of Umarex, this, uh, this safety. So this exists on the CP88 Compact. I think it's also, I think they use a similar one on on one of the Gamos, actually, if not both the Gamos. So maybe it's not a Umarex thing, I don't know. Um, the CP99 pellet pistol, I think, has the same sort of safety as well. So it's a shame because it's not exactly how it would be on the PX4, but it does its job, I suppose. So to click it down, you click it down. To put it on, well, you're on safe there, you see, so you've got a nice clear S there. To put it onto fire, you have to push these bits back and then push it up and then you're on fire. One good thing about this, though, is if you've been shooting, and then the doorbell goes and you need to put your pistol down. This will work as a decocker, which I'm not sure is mentioned on other videos where I've seen this, this pistol. It's also got your Picatinny rail underneath there. Um, yeah, really nice pistol. I really like it. I really like the size of it. It feels chunky. Uh, and as I said before, it's not too heavy, but there is enough weight to make you go, oh, I've got something in my hand there. Let's have a look at those sights. So, White dot, rear and front, so really easy to get sight acquisition there. Again, it's going to be a little bit more accurate with it being a pellet pistol, but don't expect amazing results. It's not a, it's not a target pistol. It's a plinker at the end of the day. Expensive, uh, expensive bottle smasher, really. Let's have a look at how it works then. So if I Release the magazine, put that down there, really similar to the magazines that you'll find on the SIG P226 uh, and P250 I think is the same, the same on, on Gamo's uh, pellet pistols as well, the PT80, similar magazine. Also on the a pistol that I don't have, which is the CZ P07 Duty, I think it's called, or the P09, I'm not sure, pellet pistol. That's very similar as well. It has one of these stick mags, which ultimately has it's, it's a revolver, really. But you've got the detail on it there to show you the pellet goes in that way, head first. So you're pushing it in that way, and then that's going to come out of the front uh, of the pistol like that, as you can see by this little diagram here. So you load up your pellets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, flip it round. Do the same on the other side. So while they're similar, they're not identical. So this won't work in the SIG. Uh, I don't think it will work in the Gamos. I don't think it will work in the CZ, which is actually made by ASG, I believe, but I'm not sure. So don't try swapping them around. Or maybe I'll try it, but uh, I don't think it'll work in, in another pistol. So that's all loaded up there, let's assume. Let's put some CO2 in it. So what you need to do is then take this off, as I showed before, and then we come around to this. It says open and power. So twist that all the way around to open, and then you've got your screw here. So make sure that's all the way down. You can see your focus on there. The other end 
in there. Um, do I have CO2 that's been pierced? Yeah, this has been pierced. So that goes in there, like so. Umarex, <laughs> sponsored by, no I'm not. Uh, so, you screw that up, as tight as it will go, as tight as it will go, tighter than I've just done it there. And then, power, all about the power. So twist that round, and that will push it up that last notch, and seat that in place, and that's not going anywhere. Take your, well, it's kind of like a back strap really, I suppose, back strap. Stick it on there, click it down. Not firmly in place, but it's not going to come off. It's not going to go anywhere, and you're holding it like that anyway. So you've got your the pad of your hand up against it, so it's not going anywhere. Then you take your magazine and just slide it into this bottom section here, the right way around. <laughs> there you go. Now on mine, that releases nicely, and it's kind of sprung load. Sprung loaded, spring loaded, sprung. So it releases nicely. Um, but it doesn't feel, when it goes in, it doesn't feel like it's engaging with anything. On, on the SIG, it, uh, it kind of clicks, gives you a reassuring click once it gets it in there. For this one, the magazine just kind of goes up and gets held there, but it doesn't really give you that satisfying click. So just to observation there. It might be that it's an old pistol. I can't remember what it was like when I first got it. Um, the slide is not very tight, which I guess, I guess there's pros and cons. If I go like that, I can hear the tolerances aren't that great. It sounds a bit jangly, but how often do you do that, you know? How often do you pick up your gun and go? You're not gonna, and for the most part, it doesn't make a noise. It's it's fine. Um, the plus side of that is, if it's lighter, I guess it's gonna take less CO2 to push it back. So you're gonna keep a bit more CO2 in your cylinder, maybe. I don't know. Maybe get a few more shots off. Um, it is blowback, so every time you pull the trigger, that will send. The slide back, and then you'll be. Oh, now that. What happened there? Is that because I'm unsafe? Ah. Well, every day is a school day, as I said. So, that will go back and cock it ready for the next one. Single or double action? Double action, mm, okay. You can hear it. Indexing the uh, rotary magazine there, so here we go. Click. So now you've got a pellet in the uh, ready to well lined up with the barrel, and the next movement will release it. Not overly heavy, but a little bit clunky. And if you go into single action, you've got till there. So you heard that click. That's indexing that revolving magazine. And all the way through like that so all the way through all the way through feels like one when you're doing it quickly that feels like one movement but actually it's one to there and then a tiny little extra pull one to there and then tiny little bit of extra pressure and it goes i guess uh, it's a shame that these aren't actual working safeties but <laughs> almost like an AR-15 you can almost use it as a as a cocking device if you want to do that it's easier just to use the serrations but you do find that your fingers end up resting against those anyway so there you have it the Bretta PX4 Storm feet per second uh, for those of you who are interested I'm really sorry, but I don't know. Um, probably between 350 and 400, although saying that, it's probably close to the 350 mark. Um, it's not massively powerful. Uh, well, I say that, it doesn't feel massively powerful, let's put it that way. I don't know, I've never, I don't crony any of my, my pistols. I don't own a chronograph, and I'm not 
I keep banging on about this, but I'm not particularly bothered about the feet per second. Um, accurate enough, yeah. It'll, it think it shoots where I'm aiming it. Um, possibly a little bit down, a little bit left. Um, what I tend to do, and I know I shouldn't do this, is I end up then aiming a little bit up and a little bit right, which I shouldn't do. I should either try and look at my sights or perhaps look at my grip or whatever. I'm pretty sure it should be accurate enough. Um, the tendency is to kind of compensate, whereas you shouldn't. You should look at your technique, I suppose, shouldn't you? You know, a lot of people will say, oh, this gun's not accurate and that gun's not accurate. Maybe, dare I say it, your aim or your aiming technique isn't, uh, isn't bob on. You shouldn't miss with something like this. If you're shooting a bottle or a, a target at the bottom of the garden, you shouldn't really miss um, after you've got your eye in, after you've done a bit of practice. And that's you know that's why I have them as well. I like to I like to collect them, the replicas, and I like shooting. I like the feeling of of uh, putting a little hole in a piece of paper. Um, I'm trying to get better at it. It's like throwing a dart or anything else. Shooting an arrow, firing an arrow, releasing an arrow, whatever you call it. It's just satisfying to put something uh, something down range. So you can do that with this and any of the other pistols uh, on any of the other videos that I've put up on YouTube. Uh, have fun and be safe. But this is a really nice pellet pistol replica of the Beretta PX4 Storm by Umarex. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, tell me if you think I'm wrong, tell me if you agree with anything that I've said, inform me about the pistols, because as I said on my kind of bio, I'm just an enthusiast, I'm not an expert, um, but I have a little bit of experience with these. Yeah, good, thanks, and I'll see you again next time. Stay safe, all the best. Bye.